रिकॉर्ड हो गया ना वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून टू ऑल ऑफ यू सो टुडे आई हैव टेकन वेरी स्मॉल टॉपिक दैट इज द कार्डिनल प्रिंसिपल ऑफ होम्योपैथी एंड आई होप दैट यू मस्ट हैव अंडरस्टूड ऑल दोज थिंग बिकॉज यू हैड ऑलरेडी बीन टॉट फॉर प्रेटी फोर फाइव मंथ्स सो आई होप दैट यू मस्ट बी अवेयर ऑफ दिस हाउ एवर वी शैल बी टेकिंग दिस uh from my point of view whatever you have heard regarding the cardinal principle so before i proceed for the cardinal principle i would like to convey you that there are several principles of homeopathy but why we need to know the cardinal principle so what is the cardinal so cardinal is meaning by without it if any principle from these cardinal principles is removed it will not prove to be a homeopathy so this is the main thing regarding the cardinal principle so as we know that uh, cardinal principles just a minute if your students are waiting it's fine so the cardinal principles are only three law of similia law of simplex and law of minimum so it is very simple to understand these three principles of homeopathy and if i withdraw one principle law of similia it cannot be a homeopathic system of medicine if i withdraw the law of simplex again it will not known as the system of homeopathy and law of minimum if it is withdrawn again it will be not known to homeopathy so to know homeopathy these three principles are very much essential that is law of similia law of simplex and law of minimum so let us see that what is law of similia law of simplex and law of minimum i know that you are aware of these things even then i would like to focus over once again so that you may feel revised about this and from this and onward i will be continuing lecture after lecture so that you can understand the homeopathy as i have already told you that since you need not to write in examination the organon of medicine but however this is the right time to understand the homeopathy itself so let us take the law of similia what is law of similia so law of similia means that we need a similar medicines for treating the patient and why similar medicines the medicines which has capacity to alter the state of health in the healthy person the same medicine is also capable of curing the patient if he she have same set of alteration in health or same set of sign and symptom i had already discussed in the previous classes regarding this the homeopathy that homeopathy we use and we use the medicines which have already been proved that is that if a medicine is selected and that medicine is given to a group of persons male and female and it is tried over there again after definitely after taking the medicine it will give some alteration in health those alteration is noted again after some time a several persons are again given the same medicine and again the signs symptoms are noted by this we have a number of signs and symptoms produced by this medicine when all those symptom which are common among all those meaning by the first instance when we tried then in second instance when we tried then in third instance instance when we tried all together when we take out all the common symptom which are common every times those symptoms are genuinely by the inherent property of that medicine it means that if some patient 
is coming with those sign and symptom which had been produced during drug proving if it is given to the patient it can cure the patient so this is the law of similia so law of similia means we need to use a similar medicine the medicine which has capacity to alter the state of health and if the patient is com coming with the same suffering same set of signs symptom then we use the same medicine so this is the law of similia then we will see that law of simplex so it means that we need to simple medicines unadulterated as you know that i was just talking about the drug proving so since the drug proving was conducted with the single medicine as you know that we never and even during the time of hermen also it was not like that that the two medicines were mixed together and then it is proved no never the medicines which are purely found in the nature if a medicine that is purely found in the mixed in the nature then that is to be proved but we cannot mix two medicines together to see the result of this so it is said that during drug proving all medicines were proved which were purely available in the nature so by this we understand that since the drug proving was not conducted with mixed medicine or multiple medicine so we we need to use one time for one patient only one medicine and suppose that if you find that a patient is to be given two medicines let it be arsenic and naxomomica and if you mix together it will highly dangerous for the patient similarly there are few medicines which are inimical likewise that salicylia and moxol cannot be mixed together so a physician has to have the knowledge also of the medicines that what medicines have what relation with other medicine that is also to be understood if you are not knowing you cannot give the medicines because it will cost harm to the patient so my dear student i wanted to convey you that please one cannot imagine and one should not try to mix two medicines together to give the patient because you do not know that if x medicine is given x medicine is tried it has the group of signs and symptom y medicine is tried it has a type of symptoms now if you have a and y all together so you will mix together with two medicine it is not necessary that it is going to be cure because if you mix two medicines together it is will be a third new medicine which had never been tried and you do not know that what alteration can bring in the health that is why it it is warned also that we need to use the medicine one time only one medicine so law of simplex so law of similia means similar medicine law of simple simplex means only one medicine at a time to be given to the patient because during drug proving drug proving or drug trial we have used only one medicines okay so next we will see that law of law of similia law of simplex and now law of minimum so why it is required law of minimum because it is only in homeopathic system of medicine that we use the minimum dose it means we need to use minimum dose while treating the patient with homeopathic medicine and since we use similar medicine and dynamic medicines hence very mild dose is sufficient to produce similar artificial disease in the patient so it is always a question by the modern system of medicines also because they are using the material doses so they say on patient themselves think also that their disease is so great so grave so what we do this a small dose of homeopathic medicine so this is a very big question that how this tiny dose 
or a minimum dose can produce a symptom or produce a process of cure in the patient so this is very simple to understand there are two things that first we are using similar medicine similar medicine means the same scientific symptom what the patient has exhibited and we have selected the same medicine which was which shown the same sign of symptom when they were proved during that time so both medicine and disease having the same nature and same type of suffering think that that if a person why a person gets suffered since you are in your first bhms that uh, you might be not knowing the susceptibility etc however in a nutshell i would like to uh, conclude this law of minimum that if a patient gets suffering it means that the patient was susceptible towards that disease and when a person when a body becomes susceptible towards a particular disease it means it has some attraction force towards that disease impression since there is just and just for example i am telling you suppose that the body has already been uh, already modified like that with the susceptibility that that type of disease is to be attracted and to be suffered then this body is also re ready to receive the artificial medicines also impression because this is the also having the same set of signs symptom and since the same set of disease material disease producing thing inside him inside the medicine so that is why that medicine is require only touch to the dynamic force and dynamic vital force so that it can start producing the sign and symptom that is artificial disease on the body to cure the patient that is why we require minimum dose so these three things three principles are the cardinal principle of homeopathy law of similia law of simplex and law of minimum if you are asked in the question that what are the cardinal principle then you need to answer only for these three but there are still some other principles or doctrine or theories which is also for the homeopathy itself but these three principle are not changeable forever kabhi ye badlega nahi never but those other doctrine and theory that might change in the future also if you have such types of capacity and study and if you understand then you may be the lucky person to change the theory or change the doctrine also so let us see that what are the other principle or other theories or other doctrine of homeopathy due to which homeopathy is known so there are some other theories and doctrines in homeopathic system of medicines and what are those first we will go for theories in homeopathic system that is theory of chronic disease and theory of vital force these are two theories meaning why that these are still in the theory stage if somebody finds that there is some alteration is required it may be challenged also the theory of vital force can also be challenged but so far after 250 year 250 years it has never been challenged till now but my dear student it is not like that it cannot be challenged also so if you have ample of knowledge if you have enough knowledge enough study enough research then you can change you can be the luckiest person so this is that let us take one after another that is the theory of chronic disease so what is the theory of chronic disease according to dr henneman chronic disease are due to fundamental causes and according to him fundamental causes are sora sepsis and sepsis my dear students as you know that modern system of medicine only focus over the material doses material 
material thing to be known as the what to be known as the disease producing agent but so far as the homeopathy is concerned the honeyman has considered that the fundamental cause that is the miasm that is the sora secret psychosis so he has given a very beautiful definition for the chronic disease let us see that what is the chronic disease so the nature of chronic disease so what is nature according to dr henneman he has explained in aphorism number 72 that such diseases which are imperceptible in the beginning what is imperceptible means ye aapki zindagi mein chupke se chala aata hai without knowing yourself without understanding and it drains your vital force dynamically and each disease in इट्स ओन पिक्यूलियर मैनर सबका अलग अलग जैसे अगर हम एग्जाम्पल एस्थमा का अलग है तो अर्थराइटिस का अलग है और अदर डिजीज का अलग है ऐसे सेवरल क्रॉनिक डिजीज सब जो है अलग अलग पिक्यूलर हिस्टोरिया है तो अलग है कोई अदर मेंटल मैनिया है तो अलग तरीके का है ऐसे कोई इंटरमीजन फीवर है तो अलग है सबका नेचर सभी डिजीज का नेचर अलग अलग है और सब जो है बहुत शुरुआत इसका बहुत धीमी गति से होता है और आपकी जिंदगी में चला आता है तो डायनेमिकली डिरेंज द लिविंग ऑर्गेनिज्म ईच इन इट्स ओन पिक्यूलर मैनर मैनर सच डिजीज ग्रेजुअली डेविएट वाइटल फोर्स और ये क्या करता है आपके वाइटल फोर्स को डिरेंज करता है बट माइंड इट दैट इट इज नेचर ऑफ द वाइटल फोर्स और वी कैन से इट इज द ऑफिसियल ड्यूटी ऑफ द वाइटल फोर्स दैट टू प्रोटेक्ट द लिविंग बॉडी एंड कीप द लिविंग बॉडी हेल्थी बट वॉट हैपन्स ऑन द कॉन्ट्ररी that whenever it try to protest against this insipidus disease it always fails so whose office is to preserve health vital force opposes to the imperceptible imperceptible such disease from the very beginning but its efforts against such disease is useless and incapable of extinguishing or annihilating the disease aur ye nahi rok sakta aur ye apne aap theek nahi kar sakta on the contrary the vital force become more and more sick until the organism is destroyed aur aisa bhi kaha jata hai ki agar aap chronic disease se suffer karte hain to ye chronic disease aapko zindagi se kabhi nahi jayega aur till the end of your life rahega unless you get the specific remedy for this and this a specific remedy will be discussed in the later classes later classes not in the first bhms second or third bhms then you will come to know what is the specific remedy for this so on the contrary the vital force become more and more sick until the organism is destroyed such diseases are known as the chronic disease and they are caused by infection with a chronic mal that is the fundamental cause of the disease which have been discussed in the aphorism number 5 that is sora syphilis and psychosis the theory of chronic disease is the result of 12 years observation of dr hanni so it was not that from the inception of homeopathic the theory of chronic disease came no it took 12 year to dr hanniman himself to observe this thing and why he was forced to observe because what he found that whenever he treat the patient he is improved but again and again he fall sick with the same problem so this make made him to think over it that why this is happening whether the principle is wrong whether the application is wrong so what is there that to which he was not able to cure the patient permanently so with the his experience he took 12 year he not he took but it took the 12 years to come to the conclusion yes there is something else apart from the similar medicine using or homeopathic principle using that that is nothing but the fundamental cause of the disease which has been inherited by the family history which was inherited so during first during his time firstly it was only said that what we need we need sign and symptom 
which have been altered that is to be taken and similar medicine similar signs symptom to be searched in the medicine from the list of medicines the homeopathic materia medica and just to view but no this was giving only relief to the patient and it was not curing the disease so when he focused over the chronic disease and when he started thinking then he, then after observing after taking case he came to the conclusion that the family history was the biggest thing which was not included in the totality of symptom so when the that family history went taken and that was that previously their parents what disease their parents suffered before the patient came for the treatment that were included so this is this is what i was telling you that it took hanuman 12 years to understand that there is some concept there is some miasm due to which the diseases are occurring as a chronic so this concept of theory of chronic disease was explained by dr hanuman in the fourth edition of the organ and of medicine so fourth edition of organ and of medicine came in 1829 and when the medicine was discovered 1790 people came to know 1796 and first edition of organ and of medicine came 1810 and the theory of chronic disease came in 1829 so see the difference because he experienced all those things now so we will discuss concept of miasm it is a very vast chapter which are the fundamental cause of chronic disease in your second year and third year classes okay so let us take the theory of vital food this is another principle another thing in homeopathy it is also it is believed in homeopathy only not in other system of medicine that is the theory of vital force and this theory of vital force came in 1833 and it was explained in the fifth edition of our organ of medicine later on the word vital force was changed to the vital principle in the sixth edition so the vital force was later explained as vital principle in the sixth edition of organ of medicine i hope that you all are must knowing that what is the vital force even then a little just refreshing to know what is the theory of vital force i will focus over few points of the vital force so according to this theory dr hanuman explains that vital force is that force due to which we are having life without vital force there is no life hence any organism is living due to this vital force only it is not if it is not there the organism is dead so vital force is that force due to which we the living organism is animated we are living we, if you are saying that you are living it means it is due to vital force and if this vital force is taken out i am dead so this vital force make us healthy also so during health its role is very much important so the vital force is a spiritual dynamic autocratic this has have already been explained to you even then i would like to uh, tell you a few points during the health it rules with unbounded sway many ways if you are in a health the vital force is swing like unbounded there is no any hindrance to work it it is very much dynamic so it work everywhere in the organism and retains all the parts of organism in the admirable condition your liver fantastic your kidneys functioning fantastic your spleen is very good your heart functioning is very good likewise that it works in a such a manner that all the vital organ and all the vital function function in a harmonious manner and what is harmonious manner harmonious manner meaning a very uh, systematic a very rhythmic way whatever require it is fed whatever it is deficiency it is uh, given if there is excess it is withdrawn likewise that as you know in the metabolism also so likewise that it is doing and 
admirable condition it works for harmonious vital operation as regard to the sensation and function and since we are in health since vital force is functioning since vital force is functioning with unbounded sway and it is keeping all the vital organ in a admirable condition and if this vital force and uh, vital force is making us to not feel any abnormal feeling or any abnormal sensation then it is said that we are enjoying good health so during the health it preserve the living body also it is very important how it preserve that it never allow vital force never allow to make us sick have you ever seen something that some living organism is there aapne aisa dekha hoga kai baar ki ghar mein koi raat mein koi fatinga hai khub chal raha hai zinda hai kuch nahi ho raha subah uthte dekhte wo fatinga mar gaya usko sare mein chitiyan chitiyan aa so what happened that vital force is withdrawn now the preservation has gone now the external forces are acting upon that likewise that even the human being also if vital force is not there our body start decaying first point that the vital force is that much that much important force that it preserves the living body also without any direction given to it that is why it is said to be automatic but due to noxious influence it when it affect so much that the vital force is not capable to keep the body healthy then it deranges and produce the abnormal sensation and feeling this condition is known as sickness illness or disease so when vital force is not in a position to keep all the functioning in harmonious way there is some derangement take place in the vital force when this derangement happens then it is said in homeopathic system of medicine then the sign abnormal sign and symptom is produced and that condition is known as sickness illness or we can say that it is even during the treatment medicines works through this vital force to return its healthy condition definitely if there is some dead person you cannot treat anything but until there is vital force so vital force is also required for the medicines to be to get affected so it is also the faculty of transportation of the medicines also as you know uh, you must be knowing with the help of uh, blood circulation the medicines is transported but the material but so far as the dynamic medicine is concerned it is only conceptual dynamic force which is perception it is perceived by the vital force taken by the vital force and accordingly it function and wherever it is required it is done so there are some doctrine in the homeopathic system of medicine i have just discussed about the q theory the theory of vital force or vital principle then theory of chronic disease and now there are two doctrines that one doctrine is doctrine of drug proving and doctrine of drug dynamization which you are studying in this course of study that is in homeopathic pharmacy so what is doctrine of drug proving so drug proving has already been explained to you right now that what how do we do so i will just read out it now because i have already told you this class also and the previous class also so homeopathy is the only medicinal science in which the drug is proved and tried on the healthy being this is very important that there is no any medical science where the drug proving is conducted on the healthy human being this is the only science that is the homeopathy where the drugs are used and tried on the healthy human being it is never tried on the lower animals as other system of medicine do it is never tried on the sick persons also so this is the quality of homeopathy that our medicines had already been tried in the human being so we know all mental alteration physical alteration all alteration is known so this is the equality in homeopathic system of medicine so doctrine drug proving first the medicine is tried on healthy human being as i told you and the alteration of health is noted down it is conducted on both sexes on several persons several times the abnormal signs symptoms are produced by the medicines are recorded 
and the common sign symptoms which have been produced on the several persons are known as the inherent property of that medicinal substance as i have already explained to you regarding this now doctrine of drug proving just we are going to conclude with the doctrine of drug proving of course we will taking one more point that will be the doctrine of drug dynamization now if the patient suffers with the same set of alteration which have been produced during drug proving the same medicine is also capable of curing the sick person so this is the principle the homeopathy that is law of similia now doctrine of drug dynamics this is only in homeopathy again i am saying there is no any other system of medicine where you can find the drug dynamics so drug dynamics is the only found